So this week I planned on finishing the last 10 levels for Galaxy Bash. So I started by finishing the last level I was trying to work on, and then as I opened up and started to approach the next 10, I just stared at it and realized it was not getting done this week. So instead I decided to play with some ambient sounds and music for my game Subway Hell. In case you don't know who I am, I'm Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. If that sounds interesting, then click that subscribe button. Let's jump into the video. So in my game Atomic Trail, uh, the first, air quotes, real game I ever released, sound was done in three layers. There was the ambient noise layer, which included wind, mostly. There was the music layer, which was a set of three different songs on loop. And then there was the area noise effect. So depending on what zone you were in with spiders or amongst the crows in the park or just in the empty streets, each area had a separate effect noise associated with it. So I decided to use that in this game because I was pretty happy with it. It's just I think I could do a better job of it now that I've had some experience. So I decided to start with the first layer, which was ambient noise. And ambient noise is that thing that you hear in quiet instances in horror movies and when people enter caves you hear that like low, almost like the lowest note of a harp is being strung and then it just stretched out into eternity. Well we'll get into it and then I'll show you how I do it. So I decided to make some very simple loops with beatbox. I like to contrast high pitched with the low pitched sounds to create something a little more deep. So I started with this picking sound. And then I saved that and put it into my downloads folder, which then I went to and paused for a second just to have a quick glance to make sure there wasn't anything in there that would get me in trouble for showing it on YouTube. Don't judge me, I'm sure you all have weird download history too. Then I started working on the second sound, which was going to be the bass sound. And I decided to use this spacey sort of effect. I wasn't totally confident in the idea, but I downloaded it anyways, just to have more audio to work with to see if I can get something I like. So again I went to my download folder and pulled that out, confident that now there's nothing in there I could get in trouble for. And then I moved on to the next thing, which I've done it a few times before where I've made music effects that sound like heartbeats, and this was pretty close. I made this sound effect using the metal tool drum effect in beatbox. There are a few different types of drum tools you can use in beatbox. I've typically used ones that everyone tells me not to use, but I think they're going to be great for this sort of thing. And then for a final time I of course pulled that file out of my downloads folder, totally confident there's nothing in there that can get me in trouble, and started editing the audio. Starting with the picking noise. Um, effectively, I just typically play with these things until I get something I like. Using four of my basic favorite tools for making these horror-esque sounds. That being the low pass filter, increasing bass, and then echo or reverb, or both. And then finally, the tool Paul Stretch, which is just something I use on every drawn out sound I want to have in my work. What Paul Stretch does is, it slows down the audio by an extreme amount without changing the pitch, which creates some really cool effects. And after playing around with it, this is what I got for the picking sound. It kind of sounds like this haunting choir, which is what you get when you pause stretch high pitch notes. And then of course I went on to edit the other two effects, putting them in below and layering them on top of each other. Doing the same thing, Paul stretching, low passing, adding bass, and then echo and reverb. Until I got something I was happy with. And then I went to steal, or salvage, the wind audio effect from my game Atomic Trail. I'd spent a lot of time on it and I figured it would be a good thing to just use over again. Obviously with some edits because it's supposed to be within a subway tunnel as opposed to being out in the open with big skyscrapers. I opened up this audio track and I immediately cringed because what I opened was the raw, unedited version. And listening to my mouth and tongue and teeth do weird things next to the microphone was just ah, ugh, ugh, ugh. 
gross. So then I, of course, opened up the actual audio file and then edited it in in a way that makes sense with the audio that was there. And then I got rid of the space audio track because that just didn't make any sense to be in there. And then finally I got this. What I did with the wind effect was essentially I found that it was too heavy on one side or the other. So I took the stereo, copied it, and then inverted it so it would go from one ear to the other. And then lowered that sound down so that when wind is blowing on your left side, you'd still slightly hear it on your right as opposed to it only being on your left side because amateur me just thought that was cool. But honestly, it just didn't make any sense in my head when I listened to it playback. So now hopefully this is much better. And this track, the one that you just heard, is going to be playing very quietly in the background. So it's not going to have a big presence, but it's going to have this very quiet place in the background. So like I said before, it's going to be three tiers, with this playing lowly in the background, then the music playing just slightly louder than that, and then the game's audio itself, where the character walks around their footsteps, and then enemies, and the train, and things like that. So once I got that finished, I decided to move on to music. And I played around with a bunch of different instruments and things, all of which I forgot to get recordings for. But eventually I settled on using a harp with this melody. I'm aiming for something that's a little somber, but also a little hopeful. And I think this threads that needle, hopefully. Either way, I think it's a good base for the music that's going to be in the game later. I'm going to need to make two different tracks, one for when you're moving around the game scene and one for when you're moving around in the city, because I want them to have two different feelings. The city will be safe, and then out in the tunnel system it'll be less safe and you'll be very obviously rushed or pushed to do things, as opposed to being safe and able to stand still in the city. I still have a long way to go with the audio for this game. There's still the train itself, all of the music needs to be finished. I need to do a little bit of voice acting, maybe pull some people in to help me with that, because just having my own voice isn't really going to do a great job of conveying the story unless it's all just one narrator. I don't know, maybe I'll do that, um, but I would prefer to have more voices in the game. And yeah, I need to get the train, and the hustle and bustle of the city hubs, and enemies, and just a bunch of different noise effects that I need to record. So this is going to be an ongoing process, but this was a nice release from the grind of last week. Which is the great thing about game dev, especially solo game dev, when you're doing everything yourself. When you get fed up with one thing, you can move on to something else. So when you're fed up with coding, you can move on to music. When you're fed up with music, you can move on to art. And when you promise to make 30 levels and then you fail, you can run away and work on a different project. <laughs> Anyhow, if you enjoyed that devlog, consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. It's called the Game Dev Fireside, and it's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk about game dev. And if you decide to click on that link, then I'll see you there. <laughs>